Hello everyone, we are taking our first look here at Farming Simulator 25, recording this on my phone, we've got the game set up over here, uh, what a cool setup this is, we're going to dive into it, I'll be overlaying these on it, but check it out, we've got a Magnum 200 sitting here behind us as we're recording, what a cool setup, today has just been the most amazing day, but it has been all about what we're going to do now, which is take a look here and play some Farming Simulator 25, so we're going to dive onto it, first things first, Check out that music, it's a little bit more funky, a little bit more upbeat. And uh, you can see the loading screen there, got a couple of horses in the front, the old style red barns. No tractor or anything, which is interesting, often we've had a bit of a tractor or something in there, but yeah, nice looking bit of scenery really. Um, in terms of what we can show you, it's pretty locked down. We can click on the credits, just going to scroll the credits through there, um, or we can go into career mode. So obviously you can't look at multiplayer, can't change any of the options or any of the settings we're restricted to what we're going to do. So we're going to go into Korea and take a little bit of a look. So first things first, we are able to play Hutan Pantai. So we're going to go and take a look at that. We've also got Riverbend Springs there. Um, plenty of money, but from what I've heard already from others who've done this, uh, there's no ability to actually buy anything. So I think first things first, I'm going to dive into Hutan Pantai, get a little bit of a first uh, glimpse of that, get my reactions to that one, and then we'll go and have a look at Riverbend Springs as well and uh, figure that one out. But you've obviously seen a lot of Riverbend Springs from what people have done already. So let's go and take a look in here. So double click um, again. There's lots of information on the screen like you can see there's just it's really nice and wide um, you can see lots and it's pretty easy and something about the graphics just feels softer on the eye it's a little less harsh but maybe it's just the change it's often is um, can't even delete the save which is probably a good thing leave that so let's load on in you can see the first thing there for the splash screen of Hutan Pantai uh, seeing everything that's going on there we've got the farm some guys sitting up there hey dude <laughs> So we're just going to load in here and have a little bit of a look at it and see what we think. So um, you can start to see some of the structures, you can see the bridge in the background there on the splash screen. Um, just start to get a bit of an idea on what it's going to look like. Kind of, I don't know, spread out, a bit of hill country in the background? Who knows? We'll go and take a look and figure out exactly what it's going to be. So there we are, 100% loaded. Let's press start and get into it. And we're straight into a tractor. So um, I'm using my controller too, I've actually brought the old uh, Thrustmaster E-Swap XR Pro to give that a spin, um, see how it works, but look at that, you can already see as I spin around, I'll zoom on in there, steering wheel working straight off the bat, whether it's configured, it's probably not configured how I want it to, but uh, we'll just have a little bit of a play around that, but just while we do that, there's a train, so you can see the train going across there, four wagons on the back of that, um, the tracks are double tracks, so whether it goes back the other way we'll have to keep a bit of an eye out and observe that as we go, but uh, there we are, what's the time? It is 8.24 a.m. just at the moment, so one thing I do want to do, you can sort of scroll across, I'm just trying to get, see the young fog in there, and what I'm going to do, and just jump in and out of here, just tab through what options we've got, so we've got the uh, John Deere there, the 6 r one seven five. we've seen this, the Dwarf Harvester there, uh, what crop are we looking at? So yeah, there we go, there's one of my issues, I can't actually walk around in this, but uh, we've got some red beets, so you look there at the field info, down the bottom, uh, we're farmland number three, it's owned by me. Red beets ready to harvest, yield bonus of plus 68%, fertilised only 50% and weeds growing. Now, before we go any further, I can't actually look at anything. I only have a quit option if I press escape, so we don't want to be quitting. Um, but we can show and hide the menu up there in the top as well. So um, we've got those different options, but traffic on the road. Let's just carry on, tabbing through 6R. Got the Komatsu wood harvester there, the 951. So we'll be able to do a little bit of forestry, check that out. We've got the class combine there, it looks like it has some wheat in it, so we'll be able to go through and harvest a little bit of wheat by the looks of things. Got the New Holland in the background. Now the rice planter, I'm kind of keen to try this out because obviously we haven't had a look at the rice plant. The other thing, I'm going to be very mindful of time because uh, we don't have a lot, we've got about an hour to record this, so um, I'll be jumping around a little bit, trying to test out and check out as much as we can. Uh, the old Izeki, or old, the new Izeki rice harvester, and there we go, we've got some animals. Uh, I don't want to tab in and out, but let's go. Can't even sprint. Let's go over and have a look. We have got the water buffalo sitting in here. So here we go. Look at that. Including some babies. We'll jump in and have a little bit of a look. Um, so just there we go. Got the uh, animal health down the bottom there. So it's 13 in here. Look how excited they are. That's pretty cool. Jumping around. Uh, so we've got 13 animals in here. 6% health. They do take 10,000 litres of food in here. Producing buffalo milk straight out of the bat. And uh, they'll take straw and slurry. So and they also have collisions on them, I can't go past them, can, I know I'll get asked this question, 
I can stand on their backs. Look at that, I'm riding water buffalo. I can't change view though, so obviously the third person which we know is coming isn't actually going to be in here, but I can ride the back of a water buffalo. How cool. Alright, that's going to open up a whole lot of avenues for things, isn't it? Um, but there we go, they do come all the way inside here, which is pretty cool. Look at this little one. That's, uh, that's pretty tiny, pretty teeny tiny little water buffalo. Almost looks like it's struggling to stand. Um, a little bit of clipping there through the floor. A little bit of clipping there, so maybe some things to finalise there with uh, some of their collisions and that. You can see the clipping there with that one as well. But I love the different sizes and the variety and that that, that provides. Come over here, can I find a gate? I can't find a switch for that gate. Not that I can see anyhow, so I might just have to jump back up and out of there. Get a run up. Oh, haven't been working out enough. Right, let's tab back through and get to where we just were. Um, so there we go, we've seen the class, we've seen now the New Holland, is that the New Holland? T7 it is. Um, but what are we looking at here? This is the Kubota R6 wheel loader. Um, and it's got some food in it, so it's got silage there, which we'll obviously be able to try and give to the animals. But let's just keep on focused. Oh, we've got the little uh, Piago 850. Look at that. I wonder what the physics are like for the handling. We'll give it a spin. Whew, it's a bit slow and sluggish to start with. But nice little, look at that tight turning circle. Donuts for days. Alright, there we go. And I think we might have actually just found ourselves over at the construction site for the uh, for the temple, which of course is something new. Can we go across that? No, it looks like that's an impassable, impassable object. Can't go past that one. This must be, is this the tip point for uh, bringing things in to build? This might be where we bring things in for the production, for the building of the uh, temple. I can't see any triggers though, so assuming that that is not active. Let's get back, tabbing through the equipment and keeping on task. Right, so this is where we got to, we got to the class, the rice harvest, uh, rice planter, got the rice harvester. This is where we saw the animals carrying on through there. We've got the little uh, Izeki tractor there with the FarmTech trailer on at the back. Uh, there's the Piago, we've seen that, the Kubota wheel loader, the T7 are there pulling the Brantner trailer with wheat in it. A little Fent, the 5.4 Vario, it's got some red beets in the back of that, we'll be able to give that a try. I'm um, excited to give this a whirl, we've got the spinach harvester just here, um, as well as the Oxbow harvester for the green beans, and the Oxbow harvester for the peas, so you better like Oxbow if you wanted to get in and try some of this equipment out. Uh, back to the Holmatera Dos, which is harvesting some sugar beet. The Challenger tractor, look at that. That's, um, that's not at all what I was expecting actually looking at that Challenger. We've um, seen all the screenshots and that sort of teasing it, but that's the first time we've seen it. Well, this older Deutz Far too, wow. Some real land back to some older equipment here. Um, looking here, the Agrifax sprayer. This is something we have seen in the fact sheets already. So a brand new piece of equipment, brand new manufacturer in fact for Farming Simulator 25. Moving on, the Clarzerian 12650. We've just driven a quad track. It would have been nice to have the 715 in here to have a play with, but it's got the uh, the big Bednar uh, speed tool. Um, I can't remember exactly the name of that one was, but that had quite a big long con convoluted name. Um, and back here to the Kubota M8. Right, now, one thing I'm actually going to do, I wanted to find a good spot to try and do this. I want to speed it up because apparently it's pretty stunning watching the fog sort of disappear. So I'm going to go and try and see if I can find somewhere elevated on the map and just watch that disappear. Look at this, walking across a ploughed field and you can feel us bouncing up and down and interacting with the, uh, with the terrain deformation that you get when you're ploughing. That's pretty cool. Feel it just, just, you can see the screen jittering as you're going up and over it, but we're getting up to a little bit of elevation up here, so I thought this could be a goodish, goodish spot as any. Kind of watch that fog disappear. So we're at five times at the moment, so we're just going to press the button, or point five times. So let's just press that and just watch this slowly dissipate as the time goes on. So we're just coming up on nine o'clock. Just trying to see if, there we go, and the fog slowly disappears. And you see how it's sitting down in that hollow down there in the bottom? Is it ever going to disappear out of there? That's pretty cool. I love how that is responding to that sort of hollow down in there on the edge and uh, hasn't disappeared yet. Don't even know if it's going to. But yeah, pretty cool to see that. So all those questions and comments about the fact it's foggy all the time. It is not foggy all the time. Maybe in the humps and hollows, but certainly not across the whole map. But there we go, the terrain deformation there going across that ploughed field is pretty cool.
Just going to go down and have a look in here. A few different coloured plants sort of scattered across this pasture. I'd love to be able to have a look at the map and actually see the map on this, but uh, there we go. You can see just a little bit of fog still hanging around down in here, but um, not bad at all, certainly not much. Looks like a new cotton plant, is it? I can't remember having seen a flower that looks quite that yellow on the cotton previously. I might be mistaken. Um, I always thought it was more, more white. I can't remember actually, we'll have to have a look back when we get back onto some FS22. But here we go, roads, traffic going around. Now, I know it's meant to respond to vehicles, I want to see if it's going to respond to me. I have to wait for a car now to come along. Is it going to drive around me? Not quite sure, let's just wait and see. Um, but yeah, you can start to see all the different textures. Um, technically, hard to tell whether this is actually a 3D model or not. Looking along the edges, you can just see a little bit of uh, stretching there of the texture. I'm not sure what's caused that, but... Typically, when I want a car to come along, there's none. Alright, well, we'll find one at some stage. Here we go. Stand in the middle of the road. They've stopped for me. And they're going to honk at me, so perhaps not driving around people. But certainly, I'm pretty sure they're meant to react to, people, uh, to vehicles. We might have to try that with the piece of equipment. Right! Enough of that, let's go and take a look at something we can drive. Right, well let's start off here with the rice planter. So uh, one of the things I want to look at is the AI worker and for once we can actually use the AI worker. It's not locked down in here, we've seen GPS but we've not looked at that. So you can see up in the top corner there we've got options for activate AI worker, pressing B or uh, or mode AI worker. Now that's B on my controller, it's not the same button as you'd get on the screen I'm pretty sure. Like if the mouse will wobble, there we go. Now we can see a whole lot more. So it's H if you're using a keyboard. I had the B there for the controller. So if we hold H, it's going to bring up the AI settings. So let's have a quick look at this. Well, first things first, you can see our width, and that's automatically set. Now, one thing I'm curious is if I wanted to do something like uh, bail some straw behind a combine, I could probably go through and manually set that to the same width as the header. Let's say we had a well, it's only going to allow me to go up to 4.3. Not sure why that is, but if I had a 4 meter wide header, for example, whatever that converts to in feet, I could actually technically go through and do that manually. But we're just going to go back here, and you can see it actually as I've clicked through those widths, it automatically is changing and reprocessing what it needs to do. So um, that's pretty cool. Now, jump back in here to our auto. Um, another thing that we've been added is at FarmCon, the number of headlands wasn't changeable, but here you can see we can actually go bump that up and down to... Uh, three, four, five, however more we want to do. And you can also tell it whether you want it to work the headlands or not. So you could drive the headlands yourself manually. If it was a complicated feel, you might want to run an extra headland or two. You can actually turn it on and off. And you can also tell it to skip lines. So I'm just going to bump this back down to three. Uh, and you can see, as I skip rows, it's kind of showing those. I don't know whether it's going to come back and do those rows or not. That would be interesting to have a look as we go through. I don't think I'm going to have time for it to run a whole field, but we've got that there set up. Now the other setting here is your steering assist, and this is uh, more for if you're using GPS, um, as I understand it, so we'll have a look at that, but I wanted to look at the AI worker. So jump back out of there. Now if I want to activate the AI worker, we're just going to press H, and they are going to go and get themselves set up and get underway. I don't know where they're going to first to start from, but we'll let them do that. Ah. They're going to start in the middle of the field, not on the headlands. So there we go. Doing the work there. They are nice and uh, turning around, figuring out the best way to do that. Now there is a way, I think, if I just jump back into here. Um, I thought it was possible to actually see the lines. I know FSG had mentioned you could have the lines turned on to see as an assist, but I'm not quite sure I can see it in there. Um, and there's nothing floating around, but we can obviously tip in between and have a look there. Um, toggle map view, can't do anything with the map view, but there you go. You can see already from what we've just looked at how they're skipping the rows. So we will actually just be able to see if they go back and fill those rows in between. Seem to have got a little bit confused where we're at right at the second. What's going on here? Hello? Hello, do you know what you're doing? No, you just shook your head. I'm very confused. Well, there we go. Maybe we've managed to find ourselves a little bit of a bug. Um, let's just press H again. And I'm just curious if we press activate worker, what's it going to do? 
Well, it's going to carry on where we just were, so I'm not sure what was going on with that. A little bit of an issue, but... Let it carry on for just a little bit. Um, of course, what we can do is, because it is a worker, we'll let them turn around and just make sure this is going to work. Um, we can probably go and jump in something else and leave them going and come back and see what happens, how this field gets finished off. Yeah, look at that. Well, it's going to overplant what we've already done. Did detect the section that it had already planted there, though, and didn't try and plant past that, but... And there we go, it's gone to go back to the row it hadn't skipped. I looked like... I've been playing for 10 minutes and I've already confused the control... I uh, confused the hired help. That's, uh, that's not a good start. All right, let's move on. Um, we'll go and do something else and uh, see what it comes up with, but... Looking forward to trying this out actually. It's a very cool bit of kit, very cool animation and everything on there. Um, yeah, just looks very neat. Right, let's jump out and go and try something else. Now before we do move on, let's just go and have a look here. So we walk up to the water pump and press R. You can see the information there. So it already tells us what the water level is, um, whether we can flood it or not, or empty it. Um, we can't actually do anything on it. We can't click on either of those. So whether that's locked down or something because we've started planting in it, we can't do. But it tells you the size of the field and what the crop is in there. So um, if you're wanting to manage your fields, and of course we can actually just run up this way because there is another rice field just up the top here, which is ready to harvest. And we've also got the greenhouse just there sitting next to it. So let's just pop up here and have a look. So we've got this one that says R. Next to that, um, water level zero because it's ready to ready to be harvested. We can't do anything with that there at all either. So um, that's what it is. Right, let's move on. It's going to give this thing a little bit of a whirl. See how it works. So pretty standard really. Turn on harvester, pipe out, lower the harvester and get going. So I'm going to turn that on. Uh, once again, I'm using the controller. Uh, we do have a cruise control or not? Let's just see if we can set up a cruise control here and run with that. Uh, so I'm just going to press 3, which is our cruise control button, and we can. So you can see down the bottom, right at the bottom of the speedo, we've set that right down at 1. And how good is it to see kilometres per hour? You have Kermit of big props on that one, but there we go. Uh, running at 12 maximum speed, of course it's only harvesting there at 8. Um, pretty noisy bit of kit, I must admit. Now, if we're just going to get there, I wasn't steering that properly, but let's just have a look. I'm just going to put the pipe out on this. See if we can get that spinning. There we go, that's all easy as, just as per normal. Uh, we're not quite in the right spot to put it in the trailer. Do we need to move over a little bit more? There you go. That was pretty quick, pretty fast discharge, but that is the rice harvester. I'm um, just going to jump out here, see if I can have a look in the trailer. I keep on trying to run with my controller, but can we jump out all the way up on there? Come on. You can do it, Arxy. You're nice and strong. There we go. So there is the texture for the, uh, this is the standard rice, not the long grain rice, this is just rice, uh, or what I've called the short grain rice, whenever I refer to it, so, um, yeah, it looks interesting. I guess it looks like rice, I'm not sure I've never seen harvested rice before it gets processed, but um, pretty nice to see. Right, we don't have time to muck around too much, so let's just pop on over this way, I just want to have a look at, see this, um, we can't interact here with the animal dealer, so we can't actually do anything there, uh, we've got a loading point here for bringing out the milk so if we had some milk in there we'd be able to get that and this will be for our slurry as you can see there um, we've got 206 litres I don't think we've got any methodology for being able to get in and get that out but we're just going to hop up and have a look in the uh, Kubota here so one thing we did notice uh, having a look here is the silage um, which must mean we just go and dump this out here there we go. Um, interesting looking texture on that, but we can dump that and that has gone into the feed for the animals. So as you can see there, their feed level has gone up somewhat from where they were. So yeah, different texture there to what that was. Not sure exactly what it's meant to be, but um, you are able there to feed them silage. And that's just gone into their food, as to say food. It doesn't differentiate between any of the others. Right, let's keep on moving around here. Uh, we've got a field of green beans, I do like the look of these, I'm um, just looking there across the field, looks very, very nice. I do want to, before we wrap up here in Hutan Pantai, is go and have a look around the town as well, and uh, it's been suggested to me to turn the lights down low, or uh, skip to night time and check out some of the lighting there, so we will do that as well. Right, let's tab through and go and find something else to do. Alright, let's give some spinach harvesting a little bit of a whirl. We'll jump into cab here. Um, it was interesting as we were out driving the equipment uh, today here at Case in Racine is uh, the comments around what is it like actually being in the game compared to out of the game like uh, 
in, in a tractor? Is it realistic? Um, how does it feel to it? And I was just jumping in here now and just thinking about what we've experienced. Slightly different tractors at all, but you know, so much of it is is realistic. One of the things I did say is the peripheral vision is probably not quite as high in here as it could be. Um, other pieces of equipment, or well, in real life, your peripheral vision is a lot wider. You, know, you can see a long way each direction. You might not be able to focus on it, but you can actually see quite some way in each direction. So. Um, that's one of the big differences, but yeah, just getting in here and just being able to sit in the cab. Great visibility down in this, actually I could quite easily drive this from this view without too many difficulties. And uh, the controller definitely makes a difference, uh, being able to use that little steering wheel on the XR Pro is, uh, is quite a nice little treat as well. But there we go, we'll get this up, spin it around, um, we're on cruise control as well, so we're just going to spin around, I might just cut through the middle of the field here go and unload this because I do want to have a look at the unload animation here in just a sec. Now if we just get ourselves on a decent line, there we go. Now of course I haven't got the software for my controller installed on this PC so uh, I don't have any of my dead points and that sort of set on the steering wheel so it is jumping around just a touch but we get into there I'm just going to try and see what happens if I press B. See this is, this is the interesting thing, you actually can't just press B to hire a, hire a worker so you actually need to think about it like if I was halfway through the field doing it my way and wanted to press um, hire a, a worker it's actually defaulted to what the worker's doing so if we just bring up H and have a look at it there you go whoever had set this up last or might have been working with it had set up these settings um, and was going in the up down direction which interestingly doesn't actually look anything like it should I'm just going to try and change it there we go I'm just find the width of this um, and that's actually an interesting question. It doesn't actually have an auto setting. I'm trying to see if I can find out what it's going to tell me here somewhere about what it should be doing. So again, we haven't actually got an auto setting there on this one. I wonder if we just stop it. It's because we've hired a worker that we can't change it. Let's just pop in here and try that one out. So we're just going to tab through. Like it did before, it showed us an auto setting, but this doesn't seem to be picking up an auto width for the header here on this. But we can go to a wider width. We can actually go up to seven meters on this one. So interesting to see what the difference is. And if we jump to steering assist, which is of course our GPS, again, there's no uh, automatic or anything being picked up on that. So I'm not sure what the difference is there. It would be nice to have a sort of just a button you could press here on the side which says auto. Um, if you're able to do that, just say to automatically zero the width back to whatever it's set to. Um, but yeah, interesting to see that, right. I did want to just go and unload this, so we won't muck around too much long with that, but just an interesting observation. Um, certainly be sharing some of these feedbacks with uh, the team here and just see if it might not be too late to get some of those bits and pieces changed, but let's just lower that down. I'm going to get yelled at for driving over the crop, but uh, yield and income's not really that critical for this one today. There we are, I'm just cruising along, harvesting our spinach. Nice piece of kit. Beautifully modelled. You can see the uh, spinach going up the up the lifter on there on the front. I still haven't figured out what this big yellow drum is here on the front is for. You can see it's kind of got those bars across it, but I don't know whether it's got some sort of blower in there. Just want to see from the angle. Yeah, it seems to have a fan, so whether it blows, I'm not sure. But there we go. Let's go and empty this out and check that out. Right, let's have a look. So there's my unload tip, which I'd normally do. That's moving that up. And there we go. It folds that down and then just starts unloading. So it's exactly the same as you would normally do for an auger. Um, just automatically does it. I don't think I can adjust anything with this. Just open that up down. It just says move bunk down, which it does give you the correct instruction there. It is the same as auger in and out. But instead of saying auger in and out, it's telling you to move the bunker up or down, depending on what you're doing. So. There we go, um, just a nice looking texture there actually, quite impressed with that one, spinach leaves, right, impressive, very good, well I don't know where the tractor is for that but uh, doesn't matter, we'll just leave that sitting there, we're going to go for a bit more of a look around. Right we're going to move through the oxbow harvesters really really quickly, now this one is the pea harvester and interestingly enough and very confusingly so, I cannot see the header, look at that. Imagine driving this in real life, how would you align this with where you're wanting to be? There is no visibility, there's just that little, little spot there you can see, just in the bottom left of the cab, which is a chain which hangs down off the header there. Um, I'm guessing that's meant to be a row guide, so perhaps you're meant to be running around in a 
clockwise direction rather than the direction we're going at the moment but it's um yeah it's interesting to see exactly what that is and how that works so uh, we're filling up pretty quick we are at 95% full so we might just have to go out of here and we'll go and check this out and unload it so we're just going to see what we have here for unloads we've got an auger that folds out there on the left drops that down if we drive up here next to our trailer going to start firing our peas out there and they look like they are fully shelled and everything like that peas ready to be taken to a processing facility somewhere to try and uh, convert those into whatever frozen peas canned peas whatever it is you might do so there we go that is the pea harvester the pea animations um, yeah interesting that would be a fun one to try and operate from in cap and moving on here, this is the green bean harvester, and we're just going to turn this one on and get it going. A little bit easier, a bit more vision here hanging out the top of this one. Let's just run along here and harvest a few green beans. Um, yeah, look at it, we're doing it. We're harvesting green beans. That challenger tractor though, honestly, that's blowing me away how many uh, older style tracks, tractors we're getting. We've got the Deutz Far we've seen today, we've got the Challenger we've seen today, there's the John Deere 3650, we've got the White, um, there's the old Massey Ferguson Combine as well. So it's just, it's becoming quite a list of older equipment and I know that is something the community has been asking for for quite some time. So there we are, interesting how this belt sort of pushes the plants down to then be picked up by the head. And then the head sort of picks it up, it must go up. There you go, you can see them sort of running up the front there on a belt going up just in under the cab and sort of goes up and then all the way in the back you see the peas getting thrown in it's pretty cool all right once again let's just turn that off lift that up we're going to go and unload this one and see how this animation works for the unload this looks like it's going to be a tipper um, so we'll go and try out and see exactly how this works in fact let's animate it there we go goes up exactly the same as the spinach harvester it's going to fold that down for us and then we come up here next to the trailer hopefully it doesn't have any beans and uh, let's have a look at that there we go that's pretty cool awesome now I'm all over the place because I did not know what to expect but we're getting a bit of ground information here behind this look at that and see a noticeable rise and drop as I drive through up and down here on the uh, what's our walk through I should say over those lumps now we did get that over this side can't really see it where we drove out with the pea harvester much further back but a little bit different uh, the other thing I'm noticing is these flies buzzing around you might stop and you just hear the zzzz of a pesky little fly right let's check out this challenger now I'm gonna actually drop the trailer off because I'm sort of intrigued as we drive through the field, are we going to get any ground deformation over here? Not really. So we can just have a look as we hop in and out. There's really nothing happening there, is there? You sort of get this changed texture, which is an intriguing one, to say the least. Let's just go and have a look. I kind of wanted to just experience driving up and over the bumps. Um, I'm assuming just because of the field state and the weight of the equipment, it's not quite so critical, but there we go. You see that bounce as we go up and over the two of them very very cool oh this thing sounds great doesn't it um, let's just have a look here if we press 2 so we've got the beacons there can we unfold those uh, what would that be change into a cab view can't find a way to unfold those uh, indicators on the side which would be interesting I thought we might have been able to if there's a option there nothing with the now I'm just trying the mouse out here to see if we can do that. So nothing seems to be happening there with those beacons. Um, I'm sure I'd be surprised if when we get to the final um, version of the game if those don't actually fold out. But yeah, how cool is this? Looks pretty good inside. Uh, gauges and that on the pillar. Can't actually see anything working on those. Uh, we're definitely getting the speed and everything down there on the gauges in front of us. Uh, which is kind of nice fuel level I mean everything's full and undamaged and that looks like it's going to match there on the fuel gauge but yeah very cool bounce around in there well I'll tell you what now that we're in this let's see if we can find our way around this map and just go for a little bit of a drive and just see what we can discover and there we go there is some uh, some ground deformation there from the pea harvester right let's turn that annoying 
buzzing off from the uh, hazard lights and go for a little bit of a drive around the map. So it seems to be quite a big area of flat fields sort of down here in the bottom. We're driving out of an area, kind of smaller fields up in here. Um, road going up over the other side. I'm not sure whether we were up the top there with the uh, rice or exactly where we were. But we're just going to keep on heading around this way. Uh, we've got the train coming once again, do we? Oh, there's two train tracks. I hadn't actually picked that. But we've got a raised, raised, ah, raised road there. Whoops. Took out a sign. Um, and then we've got the train tracks over this way as well. So nice to see those running. So yeah, I, can, I could make out, I thought I could make out the town over that way. So let's go down, see if we can find that. But do you know what we're just going to do really quickly? I want to set a little bit of a challenge before we go. Let's go and put this on an AI worker and see how this works. Now, of course, the class Syrian is what we've just seen in the fact sheets in the last wee while. So let's just start this up. AI worker. So this is set to 18.4 metres of width. We're going to definitely skip a row here. Two headlands should be enough. Maybe three would be better. There we go. Three might be better um, just because of the size of the field. So let's go with that. Um, I still haven't. Toggle steering mode or wheel, okay. And fold and lower, um, that sort of thing. So, now that we've got that done, let's activate that AI worker. And we are going to jump out and we're going to let them go for it. We're really going to get run over here, are we? No, that's impressive. So, previously, I'm pretty sure if we were standing in front of a piece of uh, equipment like a header, it would have carried on. But that actually detected with the width that one, we weren't in front of the tractor, but two, that we were in the collision with the uh, tillage equipment there. So, it's interesting. Right. Let's go, leave that doing its thing. We're going to go for a little bit of an explore around town and then we'll come back and see what sort of job it's done once it's finished. Right, I'm mindful of time because, just checking my watch, we've only got another 30 or so minutes here before I need to start wrapping things up. So I do want to go and try and spend some time in Riverbend Springs and have a little bit of a look around, but I know probably people are probably a little bit more fascinated with who to hand tight. So let's just test the AI traffic look at that they went past us how cool is that I mean I should be driving on the right side of the road I'm aware of that but there we go we have seen the AI traffic perform an overtaking maneuver so we can get one that comes up behind us and it does the same thing um, but let's just carry on so I'm just trying to observe as much of the map as we can um, as we go. So we've, what have we got there? This is a little bit of a water course. Uh, we've got the field here that had the um, combine in it. I'm just going to carry on down this way and just have a look and see what this is before we go too much further. It's a bit of a transit van there. This must, I'm going to say this is the shop by the looks of things. It does say Yolyond? Yolyo? Yolyo tractors. All right. Actually, I know we can't, I know, I know this is going to be broken, we are not going to be able to buy anything, but it would be reminiscent of me not to go in here and see if this trigger worked right. No, no trigger for the shop. I knew that was going to be the case. See, they're watching 24 hour video surveillance. Maybe we're, oh no, we're here at the right time. Maybe it's a Saturday. There we go, there's the tractor sales spot. Uh, can we open a door? Let's just go and see if we can go inside. No, no door on that one either can't go in there. Ah oh, well, let's carry on exploring our way around the map. This is the uh, harvesters we've seen, spinach there on the right. So this map, and you can actually just start to see, this is one thing we've talked about before, you can just start to see and it's exacerbated by a crop like corn or sunflowers which are tall but you can see that sort of depth perception that you're going to get from the crops. Um, hopefully that's going to be something we can override uh, or increase depending on your graphic settings, uh, but of course that's not something we can look at at the moment. So we are just going to carry on down like this way and just take a little bit more of a look in the town. Pretty impressed though, I've got to say, and it's still got a little bit of fog hanging around there, it's 11.30, that's just while we're driving down here, we're just going to bump the time up and see if we can get rid of that, just to see if it will burn off, does it get to midday or disappear completely? Just paid some wages, so there you go. AI workers do get paid, and they are charged out. Um, but yeah, just see, it's only that spot sort of in there with the trees that we're having to worry about, but um, it doesn't seem to be disappearing in there. So just be mindful of that. It might depend on where you're working as to whether you have that floating around. It'll also be interesting to see what sort of time it comes back in. But here we are, this is the town. So we've got quite a big canal sort of system in here, and the town's 
well, it's a bit hard to see exactly what it's like at the moment, but let's just drive in and have a little bit of a look. Um, it's quite a big area. Now, we've talked about it, I've said about it before, is that uh, Erlengrat had a town, right? It had quite a sizable town, considering the map, um, and still had plenty of ta space for, for uh, fields and things like that. Soy Story too. Oh, goodness gracious me, I'm going to look forward to seeing some of these signs and having a laugh at them. Got to give Giants props, they have tried to sort of lighten the mood a little bit, so which is good. There you go, hats, not cats. Um, but yeah, we sort of get down into this area, and you can see, just looking around, we've got some more buildings and more of a town area at the moment. Um, get on down this way to the right, go and have a look and see what we can see. Someone's already been down here, taking out a sign, so I'm not going to be the first person to bring you this part of the map. Here we go. The Oleum Koro, whatever that might be. Uh, we've got the Fellowship out there. She got another ship I hadn't seen before. A container ship sitting out there, off the edge of the um, off the edge of the map. Um, yeah, just it's an interesting sound. Not sure what that was. That's cool. You can come down here onto the docks. Must be collectible territory. Some sort of seabird, I'm assuming. There we go. Have a little bit of a look around here. Oh, and that van just peeled straight into the back of our tractor and they're not actually prepared to go around. All right, I know there's yellow lines and I shouldn't have parked there, but goodness, not waiting, are you? So in terms of the town, like, yeah, you've got a couple of streets in there with the bigger buildings in the middle. We've got a cell point you could have just seen back in there if you were looking. Um, but the town's kind of cool in that it's got all these smaller areas sort of around the edges. And then as you get further into it, as we're going down a one-way street in the wrong direction, you have kind of got these areas in here with the, uh, with the bigger buildings. Let's just uh, we'll go, pull up here out of the way, because we're going the wrong way. And we might just let's see if we can actually park somewhere and just bring that time forward and just see what it's going to be like. So let's just stop right there. Let's just speed ourselves up and try and get to some night time and see what this place of the world's going to be looking like. Kind of want to be looking this other way and see what the sunset's like. Yeah, look at that haze you're starting to see popping there in the distance. Moving along. Come on, we're moving along. Moving into night time. There we go, it's getting a little bit. And starting to see the effects the lights are starting to have. Look at that street. That street is full of neon. Turn the track lights on. Let's see what those are like. There we go. And one thing I wanted to do, ah, of course, I can't leave the engines on because it's not set that way. So I can't actually go and stand in front of it. But look at this music store, karaoke, flying fox, rice and grind gym, all sorts up there. Healthy food, bank, bank, bank. Um, I kind of like this neon glow. It's not something I would have ever expected in a farming simulator game, but it looks all right, eh? Of course, you don't have to come down here at all if you don't want to, but there it is. The middle of Hutan Pantai, featuring the Weetles. Beautiful. All right, let's go and check in, see how our worker was going. So interestingly enough, we've come back here, we're still paying our worker, but they've only managed to do a single pass. So um, whether it's an issue, I imagine the game is still in development. You can see that there on the screen. Uh, the version we have is already four or five weeks old from where it was. So we've still got lots more work to be done. The dev team is still working on it. So um, there we go. It's not quite right, is it? It's not quite what we wanted. Um, uh, there we go, the, look at the fog coming in. Four o'clock in the morning, and the fog started building on the field. Worker doesn't seem to want to use their lights either. Um, the nights, one thing I do notice is we've just skipped the whole way through night. It didn't feel as dark in the nights as we've had previously, so uh, whether that's a change, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. It is quite a noticeable change, though, when it does go from daytime to nighttime. You sort of get that hazy, foggy glow the whole way through there. Yeah, interesting to see. Also the fog becoming a bit patchy there as we go through. 
So I just wanted to hang along here and just see exactly what happens when we get to the end of the field, if it does manage to turn around again. What was interesting last time is it managed to get turned around and get onto the correct row, but didn't actually want to progress any further, but let's just wait and see as we get to this point. What can happen? It's going to get into position. Kind of, what's it going to do? Back up, square up, and then not go any further? Wait and see. Oh, now it's raining. A bit of wet weather here on Hutan Pantai. Perfect for rice. Okay, oh, there we go. It's going to get going. It's going to get going. Okay, well, maybe it was just something with that one. There's something there with the field we were in not quite going to work. Well, there we go. You can see, looking back up there, lots of trees. In fact, one thing we're going to do before we go, very last job, um, before we go and have a very, very quick look around Riverbend Springs and the equipment they've got set up in there, um, is go and have a look at the logging equipment and see how that works. All right, so we're in the Komatsu. We've got this all set up. I'm just trying to have a look and see what controls we've got here with the uh, controller. So let's just get that turned on, get that head opened up. Uh, I'm going to bring that out. Have a little bit of a twist around. So I'm intrigued to see what the bail, the uh, handling physics are like with this, if it's any better than last time. And that's there, so we've got an option there. I'm just having a look. We can cut that, so if we just press that button, it's going to cut. Uh, lift it up. Find the correct way to go up. There we go. That's going to work. Now, what options do we have for cut length? We can change the cut length. I did see that there. Uh, cut length starting at 5. We can cycle that right through. 15, 20, max length. 2.5 is the shortest. 3, 4, 5. So, some good options there for the cut length. Um, we can drop the tree from the wood harvest. And that's neat. I don't know if we were able to do that previously. I feel like that's a new option. But let's just have a look here. We can get that into position. And we're going to press our button there. Bring that through to length and cut. Now, I'm feeling... Just watching the physics there on that harvester, there seems to just be a little bit more going on with this, I reckon. Um, almost feels like it's just reacting a little bit more to the weight of the tree. Particularly, let's just stretch it right out. Look at that. Get that weight right out there it is a little bit too much for it. Um, so that's kind of cool to see. As the weights come off. And cut that down. And uh, yeah, there we go. So tree work, not too bad. Have a little bit of a look now. Can see if we can cut down one more just to just to validate our test. So again, bring things back. Not quite in position. Swing that round. Let's try and do it from in cab. See if we can really test ourselves here. There we go. It's got it. Yeah, swing that into position, cut that down to our 5 metre length. And if we can try and bring that back up, cut one more. So yeah, physics for trees seem reasonably good. I'm not too disappointed with that. Alright, there we go. That's the uh, Komatsu. Oh, we've got a view there for the head as well. That's what we've got there. So, we'll jump out of that one. Going to have a very, very quick look around up here. This is the Moonbear Sawmill. Now this is one of the ones that I did notice before. It says we buy and sell lumber. Now I'm sure I'm not going to be able to do anything with interaction. I can come up and sell wood at that point. Uh, let's just have a look here at the production. We can go in. But we can't do anything with it. You teasers, giants. They tease us too much. Right. Um, so there we go. That's the wood. Um, I do like some of these little signs up there. Automatic door, lumber operations. Wood cutting beer. Ah, not too bad. Right. And I'm not sure too much what else there is to look around at here. Um, we've done pretty much everything we can do. Yes, our rice has started growing because we skipped our time for it a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's not too bad. We do want to go up this way actually. Let's just go and have a quick look at this foil house. Uh, the greenhouse here, this is for the rice production I believe. And see what we can see in here. Uh, so we'll just open the door now. They look like, it's interesting. Uh, there's missing because it doesn't have any of the materials or anything for that. Um, we can open the door there. Left click the mouse, it's going to push us out of the way. It's a very, very powerful door. Oh, and I'm still having that's interesting one of those issues 
Ah, that's interesting. I had to duck to get through the door. Right, interesting. Uh, production, again, we can't look at that. So we do know what it needs, though. Um, rice saplings in there. I think it needs the seed and water. Uh, just have a look around what else we can see. What is this contraption? It requires water. Ooh. Mushroom greenhouse. All right, look at that. We've got our mushrooms. So that looks like a pallet of mushrooms coming out of the greenhouse. Let's have a look. Can we open the door here? We can. Let's go and see what's going on in here. Ooh. This looks, uh, I should have some PPE going on in here, right? How cool is this? Again, can't do anything there with that. But um, we can see down the bottom. So this is interesting. We've got two productions, enoki or oyster mushrooms. So we've got two different mushrooms in there. Um, looks like it can take water. And then it has enoki and oyster mushroom as that storage. So to me, that tells me that we just need to add water to this. Nothing else to be able to create these mushrooms. Interesting. Um, nice to see that they've gone to the detail of actually making it a dark room because, uh, yeah, mushrooms require a dark space to be able to grow. Um, get that door opened up. We're going to leave the door open, probably ruin all the mushrooms, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, a few issues here with doors. Just sort of struggled to get through them without ducking. So might be a little bit of an adjustment there needed for some of the collisions. Uh, we've got the farmhouse here. Let's just actually go and double check this, have a look. Um, silo over there. I'm assuming that's a grain silo for the farm. Oh, I just wanted to pop in here and have a quick look. Sleep trigger. Can't even have a look at that. Uh, we know what that looks like, courtesy of Farmer Cop from the previous build uh, and wardrobe. Can't do that either. Teasers. Proper teasers. But there we go. Looking around the farm. Not sure what this building is. If it's actually got a function or whether it's just another farmhouse sitting up here. It does feel a little bit like it could be a greenhouse. Can't see any way or anything into it though. There we go. Oh, that was good to see. Please, we came up and found those mushrooms. That's pretty cool. All right, happy days. Well, there we go. I think. Um, just have a quick look through everything else. We've had a look at the rice. I wonder if we can go and flood this field now that it's been planted because you can see the water level's gone down. Um, let's go and interact with this. There we go. Water level too low, flood the field to avoid crop damage. So this is part of that regular checking we have to do. So let's press flood. Turn that on. And we can watch that uh, fill up there and see the water as it goes up. We've seen the animation plenty of times. But you can see that's doing its thing and uh, the water's going to go into it. I'm sure if we come back in here, it's now telling us water level's only 4%. So it's actually going to take quite some time to get up to the level it needs to be done. So that'll be a case of just leaving it there and letting it do its thing. Um, but yeah, pretty cool to see that. Switch between hand tools. What does this do? <gasps> Have I found a pressure washer? It's a flashlight. It's our flashlight. So instead of just pressing F to turn on the flashlight, you actually get a flashlight in your hand. So you can still turn it on and off without showing it, but um, you can actually also bring it up and show it. That's kind of cool. Right, there we go. Just fun little things, isn't it? Small things amuse small minds. Right, um, so we had to go with the rice harvester. Had a look here at the Iziki. We drove around the Piago. Now let's just jump out here very quickly. I don't think, as I was looking before, we could jump over there. I think we tried, but I just want to see if there's, there must be some way in there. Can Superman across this, the corner? Can't even do that. No, it looks like it's completely, completely locked down. Um, ground information there is kind of cool though, isn't it? That is from us driving around all that time ago. So it stays around for a wee while, right? Those tracks have been there for a good 40 minutes, probably. Gosh, I've been doing this for 50 minutes just on this map. And I still haven't seen everything I wanted to. Now, this is interesting as well, is it? So it's tabbing into my closest piece of equipment. So we come over to stand over here. It's going to tab and put me back in the Kubota. It's either closest or last. So let's just have a look here. So we're now, in fact, I'm going to go to something where there's a couple of pieces of equipment close by. So we jump out of here. It's going to tab me back into the New Holland. If we go over this way and stand next to the class, is it going to put me into the class or is it going to put me into the New Holland? 
puts me into the New Holland. So it tabs back to the previous equipment. Not the closest piece of equipment. But that was control tab, and it's put me here. And we've now got a tractor that has got completely lost. Um, <laughs> this, this operator, don't know what you're doing, dude. You're spending more time working on your hair than uh, anything else. But yeah, they've, they've struggled. They've struggled, which is interesting. You can actually see where they've driven. They've kind of gone around and then got to this point and then decided to go no further. And just follow, actually follow their tracks by the ground deformation. So there we go. Interesting to say the least. Um, weed growth here. Might as well have a look at this while we're still going because we've skipped time forward. Uh, when we first logged in, there was a few weeds in this, but not too many. Now I've got a few more weeds, and I do wonder. Let's just have a quick look. Because we're here, let's power this up. Run it through, lower it down, and there you go. So mulcher will mulch weeds and get rid of them. Okay, another thing learnt. Um, yeah, beet harvester. We've done the tree cutting. We had a look here at this. Um, we haven't really done run this, but whoever did run it before didn't do too much either. I just wanted to really come in here and see what the straw swath look like as we drop that around. There we go. Oh, I tell you what, I reckon that looks a lot more softer and gentle than the hard edged straw sloth they've had previously. Let's jump out here and go and have a little bit of a look behind. This is the new Evian, um, which we've had before. Well, not had before, this is new into the game, so. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Still, still a little bit lumpy, but um, not a lot of detail in there with the straw, which is kind of cool. I do like that. Still does dump the big pile at the back as well. So, yeah, very nice. I do like that. Right, well, we're back down here in the town. We jump back into the Challenger. We're going for a little bit of a drive. Um, uh, but that's about it. That is all we've got time for to look here at Hutan Pantai. Um, I'm quite looking forward to this map. I know when it first came out, I was quite excited about it as well. When we first saw the reveal, I thought this could be quite a unique, different map. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for it. Still, as we said, it is still a pre-release version. Um, it's still a work in progress. It's not final or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential there and there's a few things that just need to be ironed out. And once it does, it's going to be good to go. Um, the AI workers, again, I had a few issues with those, but um, I think in time they will be ironed out as well. Um, fingers crossed. I don't know if others have had the same sort of issues or not. I'm sure we'll have a little bit of a debrief after we've done all of this and just see what they experienced as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... It looks good, I do, I'm enjoying it, uh, the soil deformation, the new crops, the new equipment, all of that sort of stuff seemed very, very cool. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it and having a proper play around with it and changing some of these settings so we don't have sort of cameras influenced by buildings and get those frequent jump in, jump out, all of that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Look at that texture down there on the beach as well, everything like that. Beautiful, beautiful. A lot of, uh, lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of character gone into the map. It's very cool. But, like I said, still a few things to work on, which is uh, which is good to see that we're not at the final product yet, and uh, looking forward to seeing what the final product looks like. Anyhow, that's enough of me ranting on. I hope you've enjoyed that look there at Hutan Pantai, and some of the equipment we can see. Um, I'm going to go sit on the beach and enjoy whatever it is. It's not sunset. Ah, we'll have a late afternoon picnic. There we go. What a view. All right. Thank you all. We're going to go and take a quick look at Riverbend Springs, but uh, that's it from Hutan Pantai, so we'll catch you again soon. All right, Riverbend Springs. Now, we're just going to start this up and jump straight in there. Oh, look at this beast. It's the big AF11. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I don't actually have a lot of time left to uh, have a look here, but look at this. This is a beautiful looking combine. And uh, having just sat in the 7250, it feels much the same, and I reckon I could press all the right buttons to make this beauty click. Um, but yeah, how good does this look? Big, big header, and I'm pretty sure if we have a look. Listen to that startup, actually. How good did that sound? Now, I'm intrigued. This looks like it's one of the flexing Macdon headers. And we're just going to jump straight into this field of canola and just have a quick look at it. But that sounds pretty impressive. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty excited about that. It's very cool. Now, pipe out there. There we go. It's not a bad bad piece of kit. So that is the AF-11 now. Like I said, I was just going to jump in very, very quickly and see exactly what we've got here in uh, Riverbend Springs and just kind of use this as a chance to, I guess, reflect on my first impressions. I've had about an hour of Farming Simulator 25. Um, is it enough time to 
create a full impression of the game not at all I mean there's just there's too much to take in and too much to understand and of course this is not the final build um, but all in all I'm impressed with some of the new features um, the ground deformation when we looked at that earlier just thought I'd jump out here and have a quick look see we're not getting much there is some there with the jewels on the front you can see that we're actually getting the impact of the ground deformation running jewels so you can imagine running a grain cart trailer tractor whatever you might run around on that it's certainly going to feel a whole lot different hearing some bird noises, some cricket noises, some of that ambience and ambient noises is very cool too, things you haven't really experienced yet. Actually, I know a lot of people have asked about this, so we'll just have a look here at the Z tool with the physics here on handling and lifting up a pallet, people wanting to know. Now what's going to make this interesting, I think, is the ground, again, the ground deformation. Um, it looks a bit, a bit difficult, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. Bump, bump, bump. I want to try and get this in, get this picked up. Now, can we, we can narrow those forks down. But how hard does ground deformation actually make this try and work? Interesting. See, so we go, that's not, uh, not very promising. I don't want to be bagging anything, could be negative about it, but we have just sent that it's absolutely flying <laughs> and our tractor is not having the best time <laughs> I reiterate this is not the final build of Farming Simulator 25 <laughs> let's tab out of that go back to it, it's still going oh we're going to have to check that out but we've looked at all those bits of equipment got the John Deere combine running there uh, that's looking all very nice um, just gonna have a look around here 9R we've had a look at that before uh, we've got the Oxbow harvester there for the spinach the Fent 7 series tractor there on the power tube trailer and the Macdon Swather now this was one that's always going to interest me because I think um, how do we turn the wheel around I want to sort of change the driving direction left shift and B um, and there you go, you can see that spinning around, so you go from driving to operating position, which is pretty cool. We actually just experienced that out in the, the case, uh, backhoe being able to do that. But there we go, we've got the swather. In fact, let's just, while we're here, just lower that down, do a bit of swathing. See someone's mowed or swathed the field down there, actually. Um, and again, interesting looking at that, because in the distance, it looked mowed like grass, but as we get closer to it, you can sort of start to see the actual crop texture and the uh, swath texture, which changes things up just a little bit too. I'm gonna run ourselves directly over there because I wanna go and have a little bit of a closer look at it. But yeah, I mean, okay. My honest impressions is I'm looking forward to the game. I think everything that has been added into it so far is um, very positive. Um, yes, there's still some bugs. Yes, there's still some things that they need to finalize, finish up, um, but that's the same for any game, right? We're still a month away from release. This build is a month old, so you can imagine how much progress and how much has changed across the last four weeks and what is going to change and be finalized over the next four weeks. But yeah, all in all, I think it is, uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I think, you know, things like that distance view there for the swath crop shouldn't be green. I mean, it, it should look more brown like it is here. Um, but, you know, those are easy fixes, right? They should be relatively easy to sort things out. Um, that turned off. Let's carry on having a look. There we go. Oh, what a way to finish off in the, the 715, which we have just been driving around. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful machine. Um, so, yeah, I think that is about all I've got to say for this. Uh, yeah, all in all, I have a lot of hope that this is going to be completely finished off in a beautiful, polished format um yes there's still some things to finalize yes there's still some things that needed to be fixed a little bit but hey it's nothing that's insurmountable right and it is the joys of playing a preview build um, but yeah i've been pretty excited to get here um a huge thank you to the team at giants to kermit nicholas boris who's here um everyone who's invited me to be invited over here in the first instance is amazing but just to have the opportunity to check this out um, be here with another amazing bunch of people and have this opportunity has just been incredible so thank you to all of those people and thank you to all of you who have watched um, supported the channel I know I've said that a little bit over the last wee while but um, yeah it's just it's just amazing to have been here so um, there we go I'm sure that over the next few days we'll be picking bits apart and talking about them more and more and more as we can share more information about what we've experienced and as you see well, you know, there's 20 of us here um, 20 hours of gameplay 20 plus hours of gameplay we're all going to have different experiences with FS25 so um, that's where we're at so yeah 
there we go. That's all from me. Uh, this has been me checking out Riverbend Springs. We're in the case IH uh, 715 quad track, um, which we've just driven one of these in real life. That's just, it's incredible. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.